Buongiorno, allora qui sono collegato con una collega molto simpatica di origine neozelandese che in questo momento si trova negli Stati Uniti, nella città di Washington, lei lavora alla Smithsonian Institution nel Global Volcanism Program e questa collega è la dottoressa Janine Krippner. Lei è un esperto di vulcanismo globale e quindi ci saprà dire qualcosa a proposito le voci che girano sempre di nuovo che eh, l'attività vulcanica sulla Terra sta aumentando. Ok, so, uh, a couple of days ago, some, a week ago, I was contacted by an Italian journalist who had read in internet sources that apparently uh, there was not only a spectacular a very interesting eruption at Krakatau in Indonesia, but that at the very same moment also 15 other volcanoes on the famous ring of fire around the Pacific sprang back into life. And this was described as something thoroughly exceptional, something that has never happened before during living memory, and so obviously there was a bit of curiosity, what of all this is true or not? we are basically seeing uh, a lot of volcanic activity simultaneously at many volcanoes on Earth all the time. And so I have here our expert, uh, Janine Krippner, um, who is dealing with all volcanoes on Earth. So I ask you the very, very simple question. Is volcanism increasing? No. Okay, that was a very simple question <laughs> uh, and a very simple answer. Uh, so what is really happening? Um, so there's this amazing thing that happens with volcanism. There are between, I don't know, anywhere between 30 and 50 volcanoes, maybe give or take a few more, erupting around the world on any given day. There are just over 40 erupting around the world right now. But most of these go completely under the radar. So, so something that's happened over time is we now see almost everything that happens. We have not only satellites, we have more volcanologists and more volcano observatories, but we also have people who go out with their phones and take photos and video of a volcano and post it straight online. So people are seeing more volcanism, but our records show that volcanism is not increasing. There's a bit of an, what we call an observation bias. It appears to be more, but it's not. With this so-called ring of fire, um, it's not a thing. It's a zone of different tectonic boundaries that happen to have more volcanoes and more earthquakes occurring around them. Um, so there are a lot of er countries and regions with a lot of volcanism, such as Indonesia, the Philippines, Japan, Kamchatka, the United States, Mexico, Guatemala, Chile, a lot of volcanism around this area all the time. So it's very normal. People just see more of it. There are volcanoes erupting every day that people aren't seeing on social media. But as soon as there's more than one, it seems to get people's attention. So that is your perspective. You are following volcanic activity around the globe virtually all the time. You are basically something that we would call uh, on duty. You are having your fingers on all volcanic activity. I'm, I'm following it too. So I'm, I'm doing this since uh, nearly 50 years now. Mm. So uh, I can plainly confirm from a very personal perspective what you said, because uh, when I was a kid of 10 years and I started following volcanic activity, via the media that we had at the time. That was basically three things. That was the newspaper, the daily newspaper, and that was the small black and white television, and that was the radio. And occasionally some uh, weekly magazine which would have something on particularly interesting volcanic events. And um, I made lists. Each time when there was a new volcanic eruption, I added it to the list. and. In a normal year from 1973 to the early 1980s, I would get to know via the media at the time about some 
10, 12, 13 eruptions per year, including the volcanoes that I knew were always active, like Stromboli, for instance. Uh, anyway, that, those were the numbers. And then I started visiting university libraries and I found sources like the Bulletin of Volcanic Eruptions that was published by the Japanese Volcanological Survey. I found that a very really precious source and there all of a sudden I found that there were some 40, 60 volcanoes erupting every year, one year more, one year less. And still at that time, the 1970s, 80s, as you said before, observation methods were not the same that we have today. So now we're basically not missing very much, I, I would say. We, at least of volcanic events on land, obviously submarine volcanoes are an entirely different story, some subglacial volcanoes maybe. But we probably now know pretty much uh, all volcanic events. This level of perception and of knowledge is something very, very new. We have this maybe for the last 10 years or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my job, part of my job is to go and write in-depth reports of volcanic activity. So I'll be given a volcano and then I go in online and get every bit of information possible that I can find. This includes any available satellite in, um, data, this includes social media, so if people are taking photos or videos, um, and then I confirm that or validate it. And even then I'm seeing that we're still missing some things. You have volcanoes that have virtually no cloud cover most of the time, and then some volcanoes that have a lot of cloud cover. So then you'll see, oh, there's a new deposit, but we completely missed what caused this. And there's various levels of volcano monitoring out there as well. So we're still probably gonna see an increase in volcanic activity as our technology keeps on improving. We can see volcanoes on very remote islands where people don't visit using satellites, and we couldn't do that not too long ago. Exactly, exactly. But there, there are then, obviously you said there are limits, and, and we had one just last night here at Etna because uh, we have had very bad weather, and there was a sharp increase in the ground vibration that we call the volcanic tremor, which is something that usually accompanies increased volcanic activity. So we know something happened, uh, we don't know exactly what it was. <laughs> we haven't seen much of it since. In the end, we still have these limits and obviously um, these remote volcanoes, which can be basically only monitored from satellite. Maybe you, you have uh, some, some uh, remote recording instruments like infrasound and, and the likes, which can also provide information about distant erupting volcanoes. I remember that um, there is a, a nice article on the subject also on the Global Volcanism Project uh, webpage, which also has some graphics, which are not all that easy to decipher for non-experts, but uh, I understand very well what they tell because they show the, some curves about how volcanism has apparently increased or how reporting Volcanism has certainly increased. Now, there's actually an additional factor that we might come back to in a moment, which is that also public interest in volcanoes has risen exponentially. Yes. So if I just watch people here at Etna for generations, people would just go on and say, oh, today it's smoking a bit more than, than the other day. And now people run out and they have their cell phones and they take high definition video and post it in real time. They make live transmissions of all of this. So that's what you said before. And this obviously allows a completely different view of things. It's something that I, as a volcanologist who had that very limited information as a kid, I find this thoroughly amazing and rewarding, but obviously it also brings certain issues with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when we look back through the rock record, we can, we can actually go back and study what volcanoes have done in the past by looking at all the different products that volcanoes have produced. Um, and as we go through time, we are doing more of that. We're learning more about volcanoes and more about past eruptions. A challenge is that the very small eruptions might not necessarily be recorded in the rock record. So if you're looking at the number of tiny eruptions, it might look like there is a lot less in the record 
but we know it would have been comparable. Knowing, look, like looking at the overall activity of that volcano, we can't necessarily say there were 10 eruptions, but we can say there was a period where there was smaller eruptions occurring. So there's a little bias in the data there as well. Where we can't necessarily pin down the exact amount of events, but we know what was happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is the most convincing evidence from the global volcanic data set that you have under your hands that there has been no significant increase or no notable increase in global volcanic activity in at least for the last few centuries? There are fairly good records in a lot of volcanoes um, showing what has been happening. And when we look at the, what's been recorded, there's no evidence of an increase in activity. And if, if we look at the larger eruptions, so there's generally probably a similar ratio through time of much more smaller eruptions to the more rare, less frequent larger eruptions, those larger eruptions have not changed through time too. Our records have been getting really good the last uh, decade or so. And even though we know what our biases are, so we know when we're, when we're not getting information and when we're missing it, looking at that with those caveats, we still don't see any evidence of increase as well. But you can go look yeah. at that yourself. Go to uh, volcano.si.edu. There's been decades of work that's been online um, there for you to look for yourself. There's um, the weekly volcano activity report. It doesn't cover every eruption, but yeah. it covers when things have changed or when there's notable activity. So you can go look this up yourself, um, but be careful and know what the limitations are. That's really important in science. Yeah, that's the thing. The real thing is that, that the big eruptions, the big world-shaking eruptions, that is where we really see that they pretty much remain the same. Obviously, there can be some clustering in certain moments, but then it returns to normal and it all equals out in the course of centuries and millennia. Of course, uh, you have to go through the whole thing. Now we have, for instance, we have a little volcano like Nishinoshima, which is erupting uh, intermittently since since uh, seven years and building uh, an island bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a beautiful, beautiful stratovolcano growing on it, which was not there uh, seven years ago. It had a previous eruption in 1973-74, which was much smaller. This volcano is certainly outdoing itself uh, compared to what uh, we know of its previous history. But then there are volcanoes which, which have been erupting for centuries or decades, which then stop. I mean, Vesuvius was one of those which stopped in 1944. Zalco in uh, El Salvador stopped in 19, basically 1957, made still little lava flow in 1966, but since then it's been quiescent. It used to be one of the most active volcanoes in Central America for centuries. Arenal, which uh, has been continuously active since 1968, fell asleep again in, in 2010 and might uh, remain uh, silent for centuries before waking up again. So volcanoes fall asleep and volcanoes wake up. But it's all basically the same noise after all. Yeah, like when you look at any kind of trends and in, in big data sets, so when you have a lot of numbers, you're going to have variations like this. So we can't look at one small increase and go, oh, everything's increasing because you're going to, you know, it's going to be variation within that. But the overall trend is, is not increasing. We have no evidence for that. I mean, if it was, we would be screaming that from the rooftop, like, whoa, look at this big increase in volcanism. Um, there's there's yeah. no reason to, to hide that. There's, I can't think of a no, single reason. <laughs> One of those things. A global increase in volcanism does not automatically mean that there, there are more problems. Mm, yeah. uh, many volcanoes are basically producing very small eruptions, and many of them are remote. Problem are eruptions uh, in, in densely populated areas, and there could even be very small eruptions. There is a lot of hype uh, around things which are probably not the uh, really, really essential details. And yes, there are increases every now and then. There's been a dramatic increase in, in big earthquakes during the first, like, 15 years of the century. And since then, it has calmed down. Uh, so it's, it's returned. And th there was a similar cluster of major earthquakes in the late 50s, early 60s. So this happens periodically. It's like sunspots. So sometimes they become much more 
active and then they slow down again. That's what, what, what all things are. It's, it's like we have periods when we feel really, really <laughs> uh, exhausted. And then there are periods where we jump out of the bed every morning, go like, yeah, let's go and conquer the world. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it wasn't, if there was an increase in volcanism and we saw that, we would be racing out to funding agencies going, we need to study this, please give us money so we can get more information because we see volcanism increase. Like, there would be a, there'd be a huge rush for that. Um, and we'd be all, we'd be tweeting about it, we'd be talking about it on Facebook, we'd be making videos about it, you know, we, we'd be really loud about it if that's what we saw, but, but we don't. Oh, it's exciting, absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's just, volcanoes are a really important part of how this planet has formed and the natural cycles of this planet, of its atmosphere, of its, of its land, of its oceans, so it's amazing and it's spectacular and clearly Boris and I have dedicated our lives to, to studying it because we love volcanoes but um, it's, it's business as usual. Yeah it's like uh, volcanoes and geology in general are really things that teach you in a way uh, about what how things go and I love this little book where basically it said we should Think more like geologists. A beautiful book written by a, a woman. Time, time, timefulness. Oh. It's, it's a beautiful book by a geologist about how geology, how thinking more geologically could save the world. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look that up. That sounds good. Um, yeah, it's interesting. One of the things you first learn in geology, geology classes when you go to university is how to think in geologic time. So you go exactly. from thinking about weeks and months, you know, years on a human life scale to hundreds, to thousands, to millions, to billions of years. When you think about activity in that context and look at how it has changed over time, it's amazing. Oh, yes. and it's, it's so much fun. It also really places each one of us in the framework that goes far beyond our everyday uh, tiny little worries and, and hassles. It teaches a lot, I think. It teaches a lot of humility. It's really important that we're living with things which have been there in a way or another. This also applies for pandemics like the, the coronavirus. It's, it's something new and at the same time something old because we, we've always been haunted and challenged by these things, plague and whatever else. So um, it's all about awareness and preparedness. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much.